Hello and welcome to the American Family Insurance Dream Bank page, where we believe in the transformative power of dreams and are committed to helping you pursue yours. I'm Megan Lund, and today I have the honor of presenting the magic of Isaiah. Isaiah is a professional magician and will be performing his pure energy magic show that incorporates audience participation, comedy, puppets, magic, and illusion. Feel free to leave comments during this broadcast if you're looking to participate. Without further ado, I will let Isaiah take it away. Welcome to the interactive comedy magic show by The Magic of Isaiah. Sit back, relax, and be prepared to be mystified. Are you ready? Let's give a big round of applause for the magic of Isaiah. <laughs> of Isaiah. Can everybody out there in Facebook land say hello Isaiah? And ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, we have two rules for the magic show. Rule number one, everybody out there needs to know how to clap. So put your hands together and clap as loud as you can. When you guys see something you like, feel free to clap as loud as you want. Rule number two, everybody needs to know how to laugh. So give me your best laugh out there. All right. Now, of course, I can't hear you through the screen. So if you like something, make sure you press that thumbs up button. If you think that something's really neat, go ahead and comment on it so we know you're watching and having a really, really good time. Now, without further ado, I know exactly what you're thinking. You're wondering if I'm going to be any good. Yes. But you know what? I'm actually wondering the same thing about you. That's right, my audience out there. I'm wondering if my audience is gonna be any good. I'm gonna put you, my audience, to a test. If you can pass my test, I might stay and do some more magic. But if not, I'm packing up and I'm going home just a little bit early. So I'm gonna to perform to you the very first card trick I ever performed live in front of an audience. See, magic show. I was nine years old. I was in my parents' basement. They invited about 10 of their friends over. They were sitting in chairs, eating triangle sandwiches and Papa potato chips. And here I come out nine years old with the only cards I could find in my house, which of course were my Uno cards. That's right. And I had how many? Count with me, everybody. Ready? One, two, three, four, and five Uno cards. I took one of those Uno cards and I threw it away. I snapped my fingers, waved my hand over the cards to my amazement and yours. I still had count with me, everybody. One, two, three, four, and five. And everybody in the audience was so amazed. They pumped their fists like this and they yelled, Isaiah, that was amazing. And yeah, based on your reaction out there, I can tell you weren't participating very well. In fact, you failed my test, but I'm willing to do it. I'm willing to give you a second chance to pass my test. Would you like a second chance? Yeah, okay, great. The very first card trick I ever performed live in front of an audience, I was six years old. See, magic show. I was in my parents' basement. They invited about 60 of their friends over. That's right, 60 of them. They were sitting in chairs eating triangle sandwiches and popping potato chips. And here I come out, six years old, with the only cards I could find, my Uno cards. I had how many count with me, everybody? One, two, three, four, and five. This time I threw away not just one Uno card. I threw away two of those Uno cards. 
I snapped my fingers, waved my hand over the cards to my amazement and yours. I still had how many? Count with me, everybody. One, two, three, four, and five. And everybody was so excited. They pumped their fists like this and they yelled, Isaiah, that was amazing. Yeah, and I have to be honest with you. I could feel your energy through the screen, but nobody out there was on sync with one another. So you didn't really pass my test, but... I'm willing to do it. If you don't tell anybody, I'm willing to give you a third chance to pass my test. Would you like a third chance? Very good. The very first card trick I ever performed live in front of an audience, I was three years old. See, magic show in Scribble. I was in my parents' basement. They invited about 250 of their friends over. That's right, 250. They were sitting in chairs, eating triangle sandwiches, popping chips, and here I come out, three years old, with the only cards I could find, my Uno cards. I had how many? Count with me, everybody. One, two, three, four, and five. This time I threw away. One, two, three, four, five, <clears throat> six, seven, eight, nine Uno cards. I snapped my fingers, waved my hand with the cards to my amazement of yours. I still had how many? Count with me, everybody. Ready? One, two, three, four, and five. And everybody was so excited. They pumped their fists like this and they yelled all together, Isaiah, that was amazing. Give yourselves a big round of applause. I think I might stay and do a little bit more magic. What do you guys say? Would you like a little more magic? Very good. Now, I'm going to need a volunteer for this next trick, and I have just the right person here with me. Uh, if you wouldn't mind joining me on stage here, Lydia. Good. And you could stand right over here. Great. And Lydia, how old are you? Uh, 12. She's 12 years old. Now, Lydia, I have an important question for you. Do you believe in magic? Yes. Ooh, good. You're at the right show then. Because magic is all about using your imagination. Kind of like when you open a book, you have to use your imagination. If you don't use your imagination, magic is like a puzzle. It takes your brain and ties it into a tight, tight knot trying to figure out. How many out there try to figure out magic? Maybe some of you here today. A little bit of magic, a little bit of your imagination, anything, anything at all is possible almost like a dream. Watch that knot. Watch. You go down a little further, a little further, a little further, and as if by magic, that knot slides all the way out of that handkerchief, just like that. Now, I was so amazed the first time I saw it, I forgot to clap too. Let's give a big thumbs up there on Facebook land if you like that. Now, Lydia, I asked you if you like magic. Do you believe in your imagination? She does. Here's what I want you to do, Lydia. Go ahead, grab a hold of this right here. Pull it nice and tight with me. Tighter, tighter, tighter. Okay, did you feel that knot? Very good. Here's what I want you to do, Lydia. Grab a hold right here. Grab a hold of the knot and slowly begin to pull that knot off. Just using your imagination, Lydia. Slowly, slowly, slowly begin to pull that knot off. It melts right off. Do you feel it tightening up, though? Like it doesn't want to come off. Just keep using your imagination, Lydia, as it comes all the way off, just like that. And you know what? Sometimes that's what we're missing in our lives is a little imagination and a little bit of magic. Let's give Miss Lydia a big round of applause. Thank you so much for helping. Now, I think you guys are ready for a little bit more magic, and we certainly have a lot more in store for you. The next trick that I'm going to show you is what we call in magic a magic hypno disc. Now, don't worry, it's not going to hypnotize you, but it's going to play a really cool optical illusion on your eyes. In a moment, I'm going to begin to spin the disc around in a circle just like this. And it's your job to stare at the very center of the disc at the disc as I count from 10 all the way down to number one. Once we get down to number one, stop looking at the center of the disc. Look at my head, and a few seconds after that, you're going to see an amazing optical illusion. I'm going to play a trick with the muscles around your eyes. These muscles allow your eyes to move back and forth, up and down, and all around. So everybody stare right here at the center of the disc as we count from 10 all the way down to number one. Here we go. 10. 
Nine. Don't look away. Keep staring at the center. Here we go. Eight. If you get cars sick, you may want to turn your head right about now. Seven. Just not at your neighbor. Here we go, everybody. Six. Five. We're halfway there. Remember, we get down to number one. You're going to look right at the screen. You're going to see my head get larger right in front of you. Here we go. Four. Three. Two. And one. Take a look at my head. Yeah. Round of applause if you saw my head get bigger. An optical illusion. Now, no worries, though. Sometimes it takes people two times to really see the illusion. This time, we're going to try it again. But instead of going one way with the hypnotist, we're going to go the opposite way, which means if you saw my head get bigger just a moment ago, you're about to see it get really, really small. How cool is that? So again, everybody stare right here at the center of the disc as we count from 10 all the way down to number one. Once we're done, go ahead and look at the screen or if you have a neighbor near you, you can look at them too. Watch their head get really, really small. Here we go, everybody. Stare right here at the center. Ten. Nine. Don't take your eyes off it. Here we go. Eight. Seven. Your eyes are going to want to move. Don't let them. Here we go. Six. Five, we're halfway there. Don't take your eyes off it. Stare right down it like you're looking down a hole. Here we go. Four, three, two, and one. Take a look at my head. Yeah, a round of applause. How many saw my head get smaller? Yeah. And that is a little optical illusion. And you know what? You'll probably never look at me the same way, I'm guessing. That's right. All right. Big round of applause for optical illusions. We love optical illusions here as well. Now, I got to tell you, what would a magic show be without a card trick, right? Magicians are well known for their card tricks. And I have a few of them here today. And the very first one, I am going to need a volunteer for this. Uh, uh, let me find that person. Oh, yes, right over here. Yes, would you come on over here? Yeah, and stand right over here. Excellent. Right, good. Now, Lydia, we're going to do a card trick. Did you happen to bring your cards with you? Oh, Ooh, she didn't bring her cards with to a magic show. That's okay, though, because remember, I said magic is all about using your imagination. So, Lydia, I want you to imagine you have a deck of cards in your hand. Hold it up so everybody can see. Ah, very good, very good. And I want you to go ahead, take that deck of cards, place it right inside this bag for me, just like that. Oh, wow, look at that, Lydia. You got us a deck of cards. She is pretty magical. Now, we're going to go ahead and use these cards. And Lydia, you have to verify to the audience that these are all indeed different cards because they are not going to believe me, but they certainly will believe you. So take a look, Lydia. We see that all the cards are completely different. Would you agree? We will even show the camera as well. All those cards are completely different all the way through. So she's going to have a good choice of any one. I'm going to go ahead, Lydia, and riffle through these cards wherever you say stop, Lydia. That's the card we're going to use for this trick, okay? Go ahead. Stop. Right there. Take the card that you picked. All right, go ahead. Take a look at it and show everybody in the audience there. Oh, the audience. Go ahead. Bring it all the way up to the screen there so they can see it really good. All right, everybody in, in uh, TV land out there, Facebook land, I want you to remember that card because if not, it's not that good of a trick, okay? Put it face down right here, Lydia. You have free choice, but I made a prediction. Lydia, do you know what a prediction is? Yes. What is a prediction? A guess. It's a guess. A guess is what's going to happen before it actually happens. So I made a prediction before I came here today, and I actually put it right here inside of this book, this drawing pad. In fact, would it be amazing if I open this up and your card is pictured right there? That would be a miracle. But look at here, everybody. Take a look. Your card. Wait a minute. What was your card? Let's take a look at it. The seven of hearts. The seven hearts. Take a look, everybody. Her card right here. First page, the seven of hearts. Ta-da. Right? No? No. You're not buying this. What do you mean, no? This certainly looks like the seven of hearts. Oh, I see what you're saying, because it's a box of cards, which technically means your card is somewhere in there, right? Yes. Right, because so then, then I'm right, right? My prediction, no, you're not actually buying this, are you? You want a little proof, huh? Well, we're going to have to do a little magic in order to do that. Watch this card box right here. Ready? One, two, 
and three and watch one card slowly, slowly rise out of that card case just like that. And what's really neat, check it out, is this card is really, truly printed on this piece of paper. It is not coming off because it was magic. And Lydia, this is for you to take home. We'll put it right over here for now. And let's give Lydia a big round of applause. Thank you again for helping. Now, one of the things that we are certainly missing, uh, besides all of our friends and all the things that we can do, is sports, right? So I thought we could do a really cool sport trick here, and I brought it with me right here. We miss our national pastime, which of course is baseball. Growing up in Wisconsin, or for me, Minnesota, watching the Twins, or maybe for you, the Brewers, we had so many fond memories, but right now it's canceled for the time being. We miss waving our hankies around. We miss catching the foul balls. Or better yet, we miss catching those home runs too. Now I have with me some baseballs here. And I'm going to need Lydia to volunteer if you wouldn't mind joining me back up on stage. Great. Here's what I want you to do, Lydia. Take your hand out like this. Squeeze it as tight as you can. Perfect. Open it back up. I'm going to take this baseball right here. I'm going to squeeze it as tight as I can in my hand, just like this. Lydia, you take this one here. You squeeze it as tight as you can. Perfect. Now, everybody, watch my hand. Make sure nothing goes down my sleeves. Because watch this on the count of three. Are you ready? One, two, three. Just a little bit of magic. And that baseball disappears. It jumps from my hand all the way over to Lydia's hand. And she had that happened. She should have how many? That's right, two. Take a look, Lydia. Open up your hand, show them how many you have. One, two baseballs. Now we're gonna try that again. So Lydia, if you wouldn't mind holding out your hand, we'll take these two baseballs right here. We'll place them inside your hand. Put your other hand on top of it. Perfect. Now I should have another one here. Let's take a look and see if it's inside the hanky here seeing it there oh here it is right here it's the invisible one do you see it oh no no no! remember magic is all about using your imagination so watch this we'll place it in my hand watch very carefully as it jumps from my hand to lydia's hand on the count of three ready one two three and just like chris angel it completely disappears yeah it really did disappear and if you're using your imagination it jumps from my hand to lydia's hand she should have how many that's right, three of those. Lydia, go ahead, open up your hand, show them how many you have. One, two, three baseballs. Let's give Lydia a big round of applause. Thank you so much for helping. I'm going to actually have you stay here, Lydia, though. We have yet another baseball trick for the audience here. Because we are definitely missing baseball, I brought with me some baseball cards. Because as a child, we'll move up a little closer here. As a child, I used to collect baseball cards. And uh, the baseball players were my heroes, and we certainly miss watching them on the field. And I brought with me some baseball players that were from the past and as well as right now. Uh, we have one, Jackie Robinson, a real popular uh, baseball player. One of my favorites when I was growing up is Ken Griffey Jr. Oh, a lot of Yankees fans, so we, of course, have Derek Jeter as our Yankees. Oh, and you got to cover the Red Sox, too. We have Big Poppy there. And if you really can't decide between the Yankees or the Red Sox, we could always do Babe Ruth. Oh, sure, why not? Uh, we also have Kirby Puckett for the Twins. That was my home team back in Minnesota. But of course, I know we're in Wisconsin, so we have a little Christian Yelich for you too, all right? Now, I'm going to make a prediction as to which one you're going to pick out of a duplicate pile right next to me over here in a moment. So I will show the audience which one I think you will probably pick. So audience, don't say anything, don't comment, but I'm going to pull that ray up so you can see. This is the one that I think Lydia is going to pick out of a duplicate pile over there. So we all see it. I'm not going to say it out loud here because that would give it away, okay? But we're going to take this one right here. I'll place it right over here in the back and clip it right there. Perfect. So we'll come back to that in just a, in just a moment. Now here is our duplicate pile right here. And I don't want to show Lydia the, the uh, arrangement of these cards, or she may be influenced to pick a certain baseball player. But I will show you, she will have choice of any one of these baseball players right here. Any one of those baseball players. Okay, Lydia, if you could go ahead and point to one of those, just point. 
This one, I'm going to bring it to the top. And Lydia, I want you to take this one and put it right up against your shirt, okay? Just like that so we can't see it, all right? Oh, I'm so excited. I'm pretty certain this is going to work, okay? All right, great. Now, let's find out. Lydia, you should have picked who? Let's take a look. Who did you pick? Yeah, show the camera there. You picked, oh, well, wait a second here. That's not... That's not who I predicted. This is the Philly fanatic mascot. Wait a second, wait a second. Uh, I forgot to, to mention here, if you wanna hold that for a moment, uh, this trick works nine times out of 10. And that was number 10. But when you're doing magic, it works 10 out of 10. Take a look. My prediction right over here that I put there in the beginning is the Philly fanatic too. Because you know what? Not only do we miss our baseball players, we certainly missed our mascots as well. Let's give Lydia a big round of applause. Thank you so much for helping. Appreciate it. Now, most people ask me, Isaiah, how old were you when you started magic? And I started magic when I was nine years old, which was about three years ago. Yeah. But it wasn't until I was 13 that I saw my very first magician live on stage. He did one of the most amazing tricks I'd ever seen. In fact, recently I mastered it. I brought it here with me today. And would you like to see it? Sure, hold on one second here. I'm gonna need a volunteer. Would you join me for our very last volunteer? And we have Lydia once again. Now, the very first magician that I saw, he went back and he brought out one of these, a clear Ziploc bag that everybody could see through. I believe you would hold on to that for a moment. He then went back and he brought out three ropes that were all about the same size. Rope number one, rope number two, and rope number three. Three ropes that were all about the same size. He took those ropes, he placed them inside the clear Ziploc bag that everybody could see throughout the show. Ziploc it, folded it over, we're gonna place it right here on the table. That magician then went back and he brought out three ropes that were all different sizes. We had a really, really long rope. Lydia, would you please inspect that rope? Make sure there's no trap doors, hidden mirrors. More importantly, you don't find any bunny rabbits. Everything look good to you? Very good. And he also had a really, really short rope. Take a look at that. Make sure that looks good to you. Excellent. And finally, we have a medium rope. Would you take a look at the medium rope? Everything look good to you? Yep. Perfect. So we have three different size ropes. We have a small rope, a short rope, a medium rope, and a really, really long rope. Now, the magician that I saw, don't tell anybody, but he reached down into his pocket. He pulled out a little bit of magic wuffle dust and began to spread it all over the ropes, just like this. And he took those ropes and he began to stretch them and stretch them and stretch 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 until those ropes were about the same size. Rope number one, rope number two, and rope number three, three ropes that were all about the same size. But of course, everybody wanted to know, where did those unequal ropes go? Inside the bag that's been sitting here right in front of you. If we reach down inside, can we pull out a really, really short rope? Take a look at that, Lydia. Make sure there's nothing funny about that. We also have a really a long rope. Take a look at that, Lydia. We also have the medium rope. Take a look at that. Lydia, does everything look good to you? Yep. It certainly does. Let's give Lydia one last big round of applause. She will be exiting the rest of the show. Thank you so much for helping, Lydia. Yep. Excellent. Well, we just have a few tricks left in the show. And one of the things that I um, always talk about is when I really began to get into magic. And I really, truly was nine years old. My grandfather had a lot of influence on my magic. In fact, he brought me to my very first magic shop. And you could imagine I was nine years old and I loved magic and I was there and I was walking around and I ran into one of these, a coloring book. And I was so excited because of course, not only did I love magic, but I loved to draw and I love to color pictures, but I was pretty disappointed when I opened this book, there were absolutely no pictures inside this book. I went up to the magician working the counter, said, hey, Mr. Magic Man, there are no pictures inside this book. He said, no, no, no. I said, this is a magic coloring book. He said, if you wave your hand over it like this three times, snap your fingers magically, all the pictures will appear. I couldn't believe it. I was so amazed. I ran around the magic shop looking for some crayons or some markers, but I couldn't find any. I went up to the magician working the counter, said, hey, Mr. Magic Man, I can't find any crayons or colors to color these pictures. He said, no, 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 no. 
This is a magic coloring book. He said, if you wave your hand over it like this three times, snap your fingers magically, all the pictures will be colored. And they certainly were. I couldn't believe it. I was so excited. My grandfather bought me the book. We got inside of his truck and he looked over at me and I looked truly sad. He said, Isaiah, why are you so sad? I said, I just bought this book and now the pictures are colored. He said, well, what did you do to make them colored? I said, I waved my hand over it like this three times, snapped my fingers. When I did that, you wouldn't believe it because it started all over again because it was a magic coloring book. Now, of course, I love magic, but I also love to draw, like I told you. And when I was growing up, I had to go to the library and check out books on how to draw pictures, and that didn't work out too well. And then I met a man who showed me a CD. He said, if you buy this CD, you can make lifelike expressions in three easy steps. I really honestly didn't believe him until I bought it. And well, I brought it here with me today. Would you like to see it? Yeah, thumbs up. All right, great. Uh, hold on a second. Let me go ahead and get it in. Congratulations. You have made a wise investment. You have just purchased the Artomatic Lessons on Tape. For the first time in history, it is possible for a person such as yourself, or even smarter, hey, to master the secrets of making realistic drawings come to life in just three easy Artomatic steps. Now let's begin. But before you draw, remember that this is not just a tape. This is a highly powerful technology developed through years and years of research and scientific study. Each and every portion of this program is of the highest standards right down to the quality cassette tapes you... Uh-oh, that doesn't sound good. Just okay. relax, nothing can possibly go wrong with the Artomatic Lessons on Tape. Now then, let's begin. Feet flat on the floor, shoulders high, chest out, stomach in, back straight, head up, and relax. Okay, that was exhausting. Here we go with Artomatic step number one. With your magic marker, draw a simple circle on the board in the exact shape of a human head. Exact shape of a human head. Oh, like this. Perfect. And now for Artomatic step number two. Place your marker a few inches below the top line and draw perfect eyes and a nose. While you are drawing, let me take this opportunity to share with you our latest cassette course, Plastic Surgery Made Easy. For just $19.95, you will learn the secrets of surgically replacing facial parts with recycled plastic. Yes, turn your unwanted milk cartons into a new nose while doing your part to save the environment. Get yours today! So far, it's looking great. And now for the final dramatic step. Artomatic step number three. Finish your drawing in a realistic fashion. Realistic fashion? Oh, he needs hair. Congratulations. You have nearly completed the Artomatic art lessons on tape. Your Artomatic graduation certificate is available for just $9.95. To order yours, call us toll free at 1-900-555-SCAM. can say that again. That's 1-900-555-SCAM. Now add the final touches to your drawing. Relax. Let your artistic expressions flow. Get loose. Add embellishments. Be creative. Remember, you are not just any artist. You are an Artomatic artist. Okay, this is the moment you've been waiting for. Take a deep breath and observe your drawing. If you have used your supplies correctly and carefully listened to my instructions, your drawing should be extremely realistic and lifelike. What do you guys think? Does it look good? Yeah? What's that? What? What do you mean? His eyes are moving? That's impossible. I just drew him, though. Hey, you. Who said that? Over here. Uh, over where? It's me, your drawing. Who? Hey, I'm talking to you. You can talk? Of course I can talk. I can sing, too. 
La 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 la. Wait a minute, though. I just drew you, though. And they thought all you could draw was flies. <laughs> okay. Well, if I just drew you, what's your name? You must have a name, right? My name is Mark. Get it? Oh, yeah, I get it. Hey, could you make my ears bigger? I can't hear too well. Wait, do what? Take your marker and make my ears bigger. Oh, like this. Yeah, now that's more like it. Boy, Mark, you kind of look like a square, though, in this picture. You know that, right? Square? Not me. Watch this. Hit it. Uh, I didn't mean to make you mad. Oh, boy. I think he's going to actually sing. We don't want that. Do you? No, you don't want that. Don't. Please don't sing, okay? My name's Mark, and I am just amazing. The things I can do are really hair racing. Watch me close. Because I am really strange. You can use your magic marker and make me change. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Now, go ahead. Do something to me with that marker. I love it when you ride on me. Go ahead. Fine, here we go. We'll put some glasses on you. Ooh, nice disguise. <laughs> now this is more like it. Yeah, I can really see. Now all you people look bigger than me. How about a mustache and a big beard? <laughs> hey, what you doing? That kind of tickles me. Now I look like you, a chimpanzee. <laughs> no, no, that's where I draw the line, Mark. Say goodbye. Uh, yeah, way, Mark. I'm not going anywhere. That's what you think. Hey, what are you doing? I was just bored. Help, I'm losing weight. You certainly are. Hey, I can't hear anymore. Not my nose. Help, I've been framed. What, framed? Oh, we get it. Everybody say goodbye to Mark. Bye, Mark. I can take a hint. I'll go now. Bye, bye. Wow, let's give Mark a big round of applause, and that's what I call some magic marker. Well, we've come down to our very last trick of the day here, and I hope you guys had a wonderful time. So let me grab our very last trick here. And bring it over here. Great, great. Now, some of you may not be aware, but the Dream Bank believes the most valuable thing you can own are your dreams. And sometimes we feel our dreams can be torn to pieces, like this napkin. And our dreams may never come true. And we feel hopeless. But there is hope because the Dream Bank, they pursue your dreams through inspiration. And they protect your dreams in order to restore your dreams. And with a little bit of magic, a little bit of you, and a little bit of the dream bank, anything, anything at all is possible. So dreamers, keep dreaming out there. My name is the Magic of Isaiah. I hope we can see you soon face to face. But we need to keep a big round of applause going for the Dream Bank curators, the, Dream, the American Family Dream Bank, and all the things they're providing for our community. My name is The Magic of Isaiah. I hope you enjoyed the show, and thank you so much for having me, the Dream Bank. Bye now.